طيب so starting from ayah number 75 قُلْ مَنْ كَانَ فِي الضَّلَالَةِ فَالْيَمْدُدْ لَهُ الرَّحْمَانُ مَدَّ Say So the Prophet ﷺ is being commanded to tell people, to say to people, to announce to the people. مَنْ كَانَ Whosoever is or whosoever was, but again, the kana here isn't necessarily to say that was, like past tense, it's more for emphasis. So whosoever is, fit dalalati, fit dalala, dalala means misguidance. Literally, if you were to, again, break it down a little, put it in simpler terms, it means to be lost. Whosoever is lost, and the word fi here is for imagery, whosoever is immersed in just being lost. Meaning that person is so lost, they can't even see the right way anymore. The person is completely drowning in misguidance. Man kana fi dalalati, Allah says, fal yamdud. Fal yamdud. Now let me deconstruct this word a little, because this is a little bit of a complicated word. The base and the root of the word is madda yamuddu. Madda yamuddu. Al madad. Basically, what it refers to is it refers to extending something. It means to extend something, like extending the rope of something, like kind of like, if, like imagine you have like an animal on a chain, like you have a dog on a leash, all right? Then when you press the little button to extend the leash just a little bit, all right? That's kind of like that extension, when you give the leash just a little bit of like leeway, you extend it, you're flying a kite and you decide to kind of unwrap the string or you're fishing and you decide to kind of give it a little bit more give, when you give it a little bit of a give, that's what it means. That's literally what it means. And the reason why I'm explaining with all these analogies, because the imagery is very important here. So imagine a fishing rod, imagine a leash, imagine like a kite, and you just kind of give it a little bit of leeway, a little bit more give, you give it a little bit more string, a little bit more rope. All right? So that's the same imagery in this word. Fal dud. Now the, the fal that's added in the beginning of it, it means then at that time it is appropriate. It should be given. It is appropriate that some leave, some rope, some extension should be given. فَلْيَمْدُدْ lahu To him. Who's the him referring to? The same guy that's drowning in misguidance. Who should give him a little bit of give? Who is it appropriate to give some give at that time? To give some rope, to give a little bit of an extension at that time? Ar-Rahman. Of course, referring to Allah. But again, we see again, the attribute of Allah, Ar-Rahman, occurring in this surah. Like I talked about, this is very constant throughout the surah. This, the attribute of Allah. Oftentimes when it refers back to Allah, it refers to Him as Ar-Rahman, the abundantly merciful. So it's saying it is appropriate for Ar-Rahman to give a little bit of an extension to that guy who is drowning in misguidance. Maddan. Maddan. Now again, for the more advanced students of grammar, this is called maf'ul mutlaq. This is called maf'ul mutlaq. Alright? What sahib al ajrumiya refers to as al-masdar. Guys remember? Long, long time ago. Alright? It referred to as al-masdar. Right? But what that does is it creates more emphasis. Exaggeration, it creates more emphasis. So it's saying that it is appropriate, it is befitting, it is... The habit, if you will, the sunnah of a rahman that he gives an extension to that type of a person who is drowning in misguidance. And he gives him not just an extension, but he gives him a lot of extension. He gives him a great deal of extension in that situation. What does that mean? It means that when somebody reaches a certain point in misguidance, where the person maybe even realizes that they... They hear the truth, they understand the truth, but they say, not going to believe in it. Don't want to accept it. What are you going to do about it? When they reach that point, it is then befitting Ar-Rahman to give them a little bit more of an extension. In fact, not just a little bit more, but because of that maddan, that emphasis to give them a lot of extension. Why? Number one, it mentions the attribute of Allah Ar-Rahman. Because He is Ar-Rahman. He is a Rahman. He doesn't give up on people. You know how we say in English? He, you don't give up on people. Allah doesn't give up on people. So this guy is a Fir'aun. Let's use Fir'aun as an example. Let's go ahead and use Fir'aun as an example. Fir'aun was a bad, bad dude. Alright, Fir'aun was a bad, bad person. A horrible human being. Alright? But even in that situation, even in that situation, 
What is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing for Fir'aun? Sign after sign after sign after sign. One after another after another after another. فَأَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهُمُ tufan. All right, first you already have the signs of Musa alayhi salam, the staff and the, the, the shining glowing hand. Then Allah says, فَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهُمُ tufan. We send, you know, storms and winds upon them. فَرْسَلْنَا عَلَيْهِمُ tufana وَالْجَرَادَ And then we send locusts upon them. وَالْقُمْبَلَ And then an infestation of lice. وَالْضَفَادِعَ And then an infestation of frogs. dam, And then a complete spreading of blood, everything turning into blood. Ayatim mufassalatin. Very clear, open, distinct signs. One after another, after another, after another. And when each sign would come, Fir'aun would go crying to Musa alayhi salam, Musa, please, come on. Come on, Musa, please. I, I promise, that's it. I'm a changed man. That's it. I agree what you have to say. I accept all of your terms. Everything's good. We're cool. Everything's all good in the hood. Just come on. Make dua to Allah. Go pray to your God to stop all this. I can't take this no more. So Allah would say, okay, mashallah. Fir'aun's going to make tawbah. Fir'aun's going to accept the iman, Islam. Wonderful. And Allah, Musa alayhi salam would make dua, oh Allah, remove this difficulty. And the difficulty would be removed. The storms have been lifted. The tornadoes have been lifted away from Fir'aun and his people. And he goes back to Fir'aun and he goes, Alright, let's sit down and discuss this. How are we exactly going to do this? He says, do what? He says, you're going to accept Islam and you're going to start stop oppressing Banu Israel and you're going to be a good person now. And he's like, who said that? And he says, you did. I don't know what you're talking about. Why don't you get out of my face before I do something bad to you? And he goes right back to that behavior. He goes right back to that behavior. So now what happens? Not, it doesn't, Fir'aun doesn't get struck by lightning. Fir'aun doesn't get killed. Fir'aun doesn't just, Allah doesn't send his adab immediately. Let's send another sign. And then again, the same discussion happens. And then Fir'aun does the same thing, turns back on his word again. Another sign. And then another sign. And then another sign, and another sign, and another sign. This is the mercy of Allah. This is our Rahman. One opportunity after another, after another, after another. Abu Sufyan accepted Islam when? Fatih Makkah. 20 years after the da'wah started. And not one, but in multiple wars, did not just participate in those wars, did not just fight against the Muslims. He led the army against the Muslims. He led the army against the Muslims. He led the cause against Islam. Multiple times. And at the end of all of it, what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? Gave him iman. One opportunity after another, after another. This is the nature of Allah. This is who Allah is. Ar-Rahman. So this is befitting Ar-Rahman in His mercy. That He keeps giving an extension, keeps giving an opportunity.